So for today, we're going to be looking at the tab that Bungie released not too long ago. We're going to be looking at a few things here and there. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will read a majority of it. Uh, this is going to be talking about the D the DCV. If you guys don't know what the DCV is, it's basically the Destiny 2 con or the Destiny con the Destiny content vault. Essentially, uh, Bungie will put stuff behind the DCV and bring it back later on. So let's I'll just show you real quick. So looking ahead, looking behind. Following the release of our 30th anniversary celebration in December, year five of Destiny 2 launches on February 22, uh, 2022, <laughs> with the release of the Witch Queen expansion and the season of Redacted. The first of four seasons that will come your way beginning in 2022. In addition to all the brand new content, we're bringing a carefully curated selection of content out of the DCV, including a classic raid, two PvP maps from Destiny 2, and one classic PvP map from De the original Destiny. We're excited to share more details on all of this in the months ahead. So, <clears throat> I say what you will, I was kind of hoping for a new map, considering, you know, well, I. I shouldn't I shouldn't assume because we don't know if Witch Queen is getting PvP maps, even though it should. And if we don't, I'm gonna be kind of irked, but whatever. Uh the two PvP maps from Destiny 2 is pretty cool, I guess. Uh if they don't come back different or change in any way, then it's pretty much sucks kind of because like the whole point was not only to like alleviate a lot of problems for the devs but it was also to enhance them or change them in some way so if the pvp maps aren't different in any way then it's just kind of like what's the point like just we might as well just have the maps there the one classic pvp map from d1 is pretty cool but again i would have liked to see something new now this all goes out the window if they bring back sky shock if you guys don't know sky shock was a really really big map it, it was the biggest one in destiny one uh not the biggest one out of all of them it was just the biggest size out of like the three that were there i think because there's other maps that were the same size if not smaller or bigger but sky shock is the one i remember just because i really like that map and i I would be pretty wild and I would pre I would wild out if little if they had if they did bring Skyshock back just because it would reintroduce uh, vehicles into the game. It would alleviate a lot of the issues that people have with 6v6 because again, remember the maps were made at a time where 4v4 was the thing, not 6v6. So that's why it my, it does feel a little congested most of the time. But I do think once we have bigger maps then at that point it'll be a much better so for me the dcv should have really just uh sunset all of the maps from destiny 2 vanilla and onwards and given us all of the d1 maps and then just at like later just re-release the destiny 2 maps later on so that way the 6v6 situation wouldn't be that as, ba as bad because a lot of people don't like it which is understandable um i will say though if they do bring big maps back then the two PvP maps would be pretty wild. Like, can you imagine like Legion's Gulch, but like actually way more bigger than it already is right now? Uh, same thing with Citadel, but the Citadel, I would love it if it was like in an actual city. Not like nothing too crazy, but like an actual city that you like you can go into like buildings and whatnot would be really cool. But it's I'm just shooting blank, like ideas off the top of my head, but like. We really do need big maps back just because it added variety. It gave you a sense of like, well, I can use a scout rifle here because you know, it's a big map. I can use a sniper rifle here because it's a big map. Uh, big, like different sizes of maps really help with the variety of the game because you can't like, you. well, you could use a shotgun in like a map like Sky Shock, but like you're gonna get shot most of the time again. This also brings back like, oh, we should have voting for for maps in case like people don't want to use like, I don't know. For me, I would just I would like a lot more customization and choice, but that's just me. Uh, vaulting in year five, beginning in on February 22nd, the Forsaken campaign and the Tangled Shore destination where it will enter the DCV. The Dreaming City destination will continue to be available. OK, huh? Well, hmm why well, i'm not i'm not complaining like that's cool it's just like why that one though 
Uh, Tangled Shore leaving is not that big a deal for me just because like, uh, well, no, I'm Tangled Shore, the place I always go to. No. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Uh, along with your four seasonal content, including the Presage and Harbinger exotic missions, we understand the unique value of those definite that of these definitely destiny experiences and are investigating ways to reprise and create new exciting exotic special missions within destiny 2 for the future vaulting this content will allow us the space to launch the witch queen expansion and its new throne world destination as well as new features like weapon crafting the new legendary difficulty what campaign option that i didn't know that the new glaive weapon archetype plus all the additional content we have planned for the four new seasons to come starting in february while most of the year four seasonal content will be vaulted certain year four content will persist persist in year five including the proven ground strike the battlegrounds activities Beginning in February, the existing battlegrounds will be combined with strikes into a new Vanguard Operations playlist that will be free for all players. In addition, the Warden of Nothing strike will remain in the game and will be available to all players for free. Lastly, all the Spider's Currency Exchange function will be taken over by Master Raul in the tower when the Tangled Shore is moved into the DCV. So Master Raul is becoming more relevant, which is pretty cool. I uh, wonder what they're going to do with Spider. I think he's going to die, actually. Um, if you guys have been keeping up with the story. The Vanguard Operations is pretty cool. I hope that they don't stick. Well, it says combined with strikes. So, I, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, Battlegrounds are long. Uh, they're longer than most strikes. So, I don't like the idea of going into a, a strike and then getting a battleground because I'm just gonna be like, fuck, I don't wanna do this shit. It would be much cooler if Van Vanguard Operations was like, all right, Vanguard, and then the seasonal content stuff, like old seasonal content stuff, like battlegrounds, and then other Vanguard stuff that they bring along the, along the lines, that would be pretty cool. Um, just because battlegrounds can take a long time and I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Battlegrounds. I liked them initially, initially, but it's the the fact that it takes too much time. Although, if they shorten the amount of time that like, or the amount requirement to like complete certain objectives, then I wouldn't mind actually. But with how Battlegrounds are now, the fact that there's champions in it, the fact that they're actually, you know, it would be cool. And I would be super okay with this if they a vanguard operations was a harder difficulty for strikes they could have like regular strikes and then vanguard operations which would be like the hard mode of that and then all the strikes from there would have champions and whatnot but i don't know that's me personally i would love it if that would that would be the case because then at that point there would be no reason there'd be no excuse for not to not to have a uh, uh, strike specific loot. Oh my god, I want strike specific loot to come back But yeah, this is pretty cool again. Like I said, I'm just throwing ideas out uh, Vanguard operations would be cool if at that point it became a harder difficulty and it had strike specific loot And then at one point battleground specific loot would be pretty cool, too But I mean strike specific loot is already shooting up it like already wishing for a for us for a wish so battleground specific loot is already like even more so so this is cool, I guess. Uh, relive the campaign. The Forsaken campaign will be available for free for all players for from de December 7th, 2021 until it enters the DCV in February 2022. If you, in, if you or your friends have not had the chance to live Forsaken's epic narrative and experience the origins of Aldrin Sa before you became Crow, this will be your chance. This is pretty cool because a lot of people have not because, you know, the campaign's out, like it's not in the game anymore. This is gonna be really cool. I'm definitely gonna like scoop up some pictures for my fashion stuff when I'm with uh, Cade. And it's also gonna, I'm also gonna take a picture with Cade one last time. One last hurrah, if you will. Uh, Forsaken Pack. Beginning on December 7th, the Forsaken Pack will be available for purchase and will include access to the Last Wish Raid and the Shattered Throne Dungeon, as well as access to all of the Forsaken Exotics. The Forsaken Pack will also include three Forsaken Ciphers that can be used to instantly unlock your choice of Forsaken Exotics, not including Raid or Dungeon Exotics. Via the, via the key, uh, Exotic Kiosk in the Tower, everyone who 
previously purchased Forsaken will automatically own the new Forsaken pack oh, and will receive the three Forsaken ciphers directly in their inventory. If you already have every Forsaken exotic weapon, those ciphers will be converted to Ascendant Shards. So I'm getting, I'm getting three Ascendant Shards. Okay, that's I fuck with that. Uh, nothing really much to say here. It's pretty cool. Uh, I wonder how much it's going to be just because this is like dated content. And when I say dated content, I mean, like this is like two years ago, if I remember correctly, uh, two to three, maybe actually. So it's it's cool. Definitely cool. But like if you're charging like 30, 50 bucks for this shit, I'd be like, ah, that's a lot of money for content. That's like old as dicks, dog. But that's just me. Uh, 2022 will be here before you know it, and we're so grateful to all of you who have helped make 2021 such a memorable year for Destiny. We had some amazing experiences together, whether building new adventures for you to enjoy or playing alongside our fellow guardians. Destiny is growing, and we're incredibly excited for the future, including the near-term launches of our 30th anniversary celebration, the Witch Queen expansion, the season of Redacted, as well as those stories that are a bit further away, including Lightfall and the Final Shape and everything that follows. Whether you're a new light or a long time fan, this is shaping up to be one of the most exciting periods in Destiny history. Thanks for being with us for the ride and for being part of all the stories that to come. So that was your TWAB. I didn't read the first portion essentially, which it doesn't really say much, just explains the DCV and whatnot. I, I'm okay with it. Like it's, I don't know. The DCV still doesn't make sense to me. Cause like I look at games like Final Fantasy XIV, uh, World of Warcraft, and they have like content from like decades ago and shit. At, at least for uh, for World of Warcraft has like content from decades ago or decade or whatever. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV as well has content from like a long time. So like when I see Destiny Two, it's like we can't we we can't afford. Cause like it's like why though like final fantasy 14 can do it wow is a different story like a lot of their graphics is very cartoony and like low compared to like destiny 2 and final fantasy 14 which i get final fantasy 14 is like that shit looks beautiful so like why i don't know i'm just spitballing obviously like don't take me too seriously because i'm not a game dev but it's just one of those like it just seems like you just you, you want to take content out of destiny 2 to just give it to, back to us later and expect us to be like, yay, like we got something back. Like, I don't know. That's just me personally. I don't, I don't, the CV has always like had a really bad taste in my mouth. And it's just one of those like, oh, we get two maps from Destiny 2, cool. And then one from D1. And it's like, that's cool. The two maps from Destiny 2 is not because it's like, I played those before. Doesn't matter which one of they are, I played them. So. Unless they come back completely different, like I said, if they're coming back, at, or if, if they're coming back to us with like sky shock level of map, then fuck it, ignore everything I just said. Super dope. But that's pretty much it. That is your twab. Let me know what you thought. Your, what, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, the next videos I will be talking about what players can do to basically hold themselves over until whatever comes up and what Bungie could do specifically to basically help us through this content drop because it is gonna be a content drop until, I'm gonna be generous and say the 30th anniversary just because, I'm not even generous, like they have, we're getting new content in the 30th anniversary. You could tell me the Halloween event, be, but for me the Halloween event is not content because I've done that like three times over. So it's not content anymore. The only content that it would be is me buying the fucking armor sets for, for bright dust. That's the only quote unquote content there is for me. So be safe guys. I will see you guys later.